be joined by Richard Pitt, founder and tech head at Resno and a friend of our agency. Richard has more than 15 years experience in online media advertising and marketing. Richard has previously worked for 118 Media, Touch Local and British Telecom during his professional career. Ten years ago, Richard took the step to launch his own digital agency designed to help businesses advertise themselves more effectively through the creation of responsive design, website and online marketing. Richard has two businesses he runs, one company which provides all-in-one website packages for the smaller startups and Resno, which helps small to medium businesses and larger organisations. Resno Web Design and Digital Marketing opened as a walk-in high street studio in 2014, which now provides Google affiliated ads management and a one-stop shop and all digital marketing branding design and print solutions. So I'm delighted to welcome the fantastic Richard, if I just tune him in now, uh, if I can find him. There he is, Richard. <laughs> Hi there, Matthew. <laughs> Hi, thank you for joining me today to have a chat with you. Um, it's really fantastic because obviously, you know, websites is, is a really big area. We work very closely with our clients as on web content, as you well know. And, you know, we know how important having a good website is. Um, and we know that obviously having good, a good well-written website, you know, with great content on is going to be crucial with good keyword search, et cetera, et cetera. But about the physical site, I wanted to chat to you initially about, you know, what are the common problems that you maybe see on websites through your job? I mean, it can vary really, but you can find that sometimes with a website, the content can be poor within the website. So the content is really, really important to try and help the website rank. You will, we will come across situations where people do try and have a website built on a very low budget. When that sometimes happens, there's no technical on-site SEO done within that process. So it's great having a website, but if, for example, that person wants to be found, we can get clients come in and go, I've had this website built, I'm not even ranking under my name. So Firstly, they may want to be a business and they may want to be found under a search term, but if they don't even get found under their name and they go to a business meeting and go, great, people will check that business out online. Years ago, you just had to give a business card. Now they will look at your website as well. And if they can't find you, it doesn't really create the right impression. Um, navigations are, are key parts within websites, whether it's a, a standard website or an e-commerce platform. If you can't find the, the shop feature easily and it's hidden, mm. then you're not going to convert sales as well from, from the website. There's lots of different factors. I mean, you could look at the coding. So we will get situations where a client will contact us generally and they may want us to work on a site they previously, previously have had built. If that code is not clean behind the website, then we unfortunately have to look at the website first and any professional studio sometimes they will go we're not comfortable working on this because you touch one thing in the website and yeah. it could affect something else and if someone's not built the website in the correct way that's a challenge you could come across so there's lots of different factors yeah i think it's really interesting you're sort of touching on you know obviously i, I mentioned about we do a lot of content creation for clients you know we do a lot of seo work on that but that's only part of great seo the whole part is everything that you guys do in terms of the build and every and also the navigation process because i think you know that's another big factor is you know in terms of being able to navigate easily around you know the website you know and sometimes you know in the past we've done work and maybe a client said to us yeah but we're getting traffic but it's not converting and it's like well is that something to do with the process of how the website layout and the build is you know and you were obviously you guys would know more about that than we would but it is everything is integrated in terms of making that a, a seamless experience for the visitor and like you say if you can't find the shop very easily that's going to have a massive impact in terms of people wanting to you know getting those sales conversions isn't it yeah. and, and and another thing that can affect it as well you need to look at the website and you need to look at sort of loading speeds so if you hit this website and you're going and it's not loading within a certain time frame you're going to get something called a bounce rate and people will physically come off that website because mm. they can't find what they're looking for because it's still loading mm. and they come off and they go to your competitor. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, you know, this is the thing to remember is just because you're happy to spend a long time 
on your website, most people will just be wanting to get on and get the job done, have a quick look, buy what they want to buy and then be off. So like you say, if it's, if it's a very slow process, you know, the page loading, I know that, uh, for example, Google ranks, don't they, in terms of, of your being mobile friendly and also the page loading times, so all of these factors, even things like I know having large images can slow down your website, can't Correct, it? Correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of sort of obviously, you know, a technical side. I mean, what I'd like to do is maybe sort of have a chat with you about delving deeper into things like the site plan and the flow and the technical aspects, because I don't think people, a lot of people are aware when we're talking to clients and they're talking about getting a new website built, they often will say, okay, we're going to buy this package, you know, it's X amount of money. And it's like, well, is that going to be good enough? To do the job that you need it to do and do, do you find that with people they say well i can find this site but there's so much more to it isn't there than just buying a package and going i want to bespoke and make this something without the, having the technical know-how i mean it's a difficult one because a lot of people are trying to build websites on a very not everybody but on a on a low budget and it is very confusing mm. because if you are building a website correctly and the process is that a design studio will go through correctly mm. you can't just build the website in a few hours and there are lots of adverts on tv at the moment for website builders and they literally go build your website in a couple of minutes but realistically you're not building a whole website in a couple of minutes there are factors that are cut out when that site's produced and they may be referring to a simple single page where you drop in a logo you put one image and you put maybe four lines of content. Yes, you know, that could be done in half hour on a, a website builder, but that's actually not a full website. So it depends on what the client's after, really. So, you know, and it depends how they're trying to, to do it because they may be limited by budgets. You, the other thing that you will find as well is you will find that some web designers that aren't maybe fully uh, experienced may use templates. So you can go and buy design themes. So they're literally buying a design theme off the shelf. They're dropping that information in, and that's a quicker way of doing it as well. And when no. them, when sorry. them sites carry on. Sorry, when, sorry. I wanted to say, just jump in on that. Sorry to, yeah. to interrupt you, Richard, but I just wanted to uh, sort of explore that further because I mean, we had a, a, a client who had a website built by somebody who was not a website developer. They were you know, they were graphics, um, and it was a very lovely looking website. But, and they bought a theme and it looked fantastic, but actually the functionality of that website was flawed because they bought the basics and then tried to add on different elements and because they didn't have the technical know-how, it looked fantastic, but actually things kept breaking with it because you're adding on all these different layers that you're not familiar with. And what's difficult with the themes is they've been built a certain way, so they're restrictive. So if you're trying to adapt that theme, you're pulling somebody else's sometimes code apart and then you're changing one thing and it's affecting a different scenario within the website. I think you need to be transparent by going, if you're building a website, you need to know what the customer goals are from the beginning. You need to be realistic and go, this is how you would design the website. These are the features trying to future proof that you may want to add on. If the site's built bespokely, it gives you freelance to do exactly whatever you want. But what you can't do, whether it's a template or whether you're building, or you can do, but you're building a site from scratch. If you try and pull that whole design apart six months down the line, you've got to go again. So really, you need to think about your planning with your website to future proof it. And realistically, you know, at one time you could build a website and not worry about changing it for five six seven years we're finding with a lot of companies every three to four years now they're going again and they are changing their website because constantly technologies are changing i was going to say there's so many different aspects isn't there that you can add now that you know to the website and things are constantly changing and also the look and feel of the website can become very dated very quickly and i think it's important to remember you know from a marketing perspective that your website is your shop window mm -hmm. you know a lot of businesses and particularly right now mm -hmm. are, are you know moving online and wanting to, to sort of move their business if they're not already or if they are an online business mm -hmm. is really maximize their opportunity for selling online so i think you know it it is about having a website that is functional and has the ability to evolve or you're going to be looking at like you say changing your website 
you know, every three to four years in order to be able to keep pace of those changes. So I think, I think there's a difference. I think it's good to reevaluate your website so you don't just build a website nowadays and you literally go, and, I'm going to leave it. Because I think people are traditionally used to the former ways of advertising in the past that may have been paper products and you may put uh, an advert in, in a place and you go, great, I can just leave that for a year. But you've got to work with your website. You've got to update people what's happening, any changes that are happening. It's good to uh, regularly do updates because Google likes to see fresh content going in there as well because, you know, there's two factors. One is, as I say, people want to have that website, but it depends what your goal is as a business as well. If you're trying to use a website to get traction and get potential leads, then how are you going to achieve that if you can't be found under certain search terms online on the locations that you're trying to target and the specific services that you do within your business? Mm. I think what some people get confused about as well is, is the whole SEO aspect. So they mm. get a new website built, they have the SEO done on it, and then we might be called in to write some blog content. Mm. And, and it's not ongoing. It's literally just maybe four or five blogs mm. to start off. But SEO is an ongoing effort, isn't it? Can you explain a bit more about that? Well, I mean, the thing is, if you turn around and you look at your competitors, I mean, there's two, a really simple way of putting it, and you have your website built, and then you've done it, and you've closed the door and going, great, I've done that. If you don't try to get further engagement with your website and try to get relevant content within your website so Google recognize it, ranks it, indexes it, it correctly, then you're not going to uh, compete against the other website because if a competitor you're in your industry is constantly doing updates, putting new articles in, looking at ways of link building into the website as well, mm -hmm. then what will actually happen is they're going to start ranking more heavily online than you. If you don't do anything with your website, then you're not going to get the, the rewards back from the website. Absolutely. It's about an ongoing effort, isn't it? Yeah. And I think, you know, we sort of touched... Uh, about you know like you were saying earlier there are some businesses out there who are doing everything on a budget and you know it's it's obviously very different when somebody works with with somebody like yourselves like yeah. we do um so you know when how does the process work rich well, you know when you sort of initially come to you and say right okay i want a website just to sort of give us how, how do you guys work well i mean there's a couple of different ways we do it what we actually do is we have an initial meeting with the client it's changing at this moment. I've literally had meetings today on video conferencing, uh, but this is going to change how the industry works. Uh, and again, we will have a meeting with that client and we really need to get an understanding of what their business is like and what they're trying to achieve and what their goals are. From that initial meeting, we need to look at, are they just after the website? Do they need to potentially look at their branding or their logo design? Because sometimes we get a client coming in and go, I'm not happy, I'm looking to change my, my website, upgrade it, but my logo doesn't really fit in what I'm trying to do. Can you have a, look at, have a look at that now? What's the purpose of the website? Because there will be some people, realistically, all they want is a website just really for someone to look for them online under their name. But there will be businesses that, as we've discussed, that will want to get traction for new leads. So if that's what their goal is, we need to find their informa that information out. What are you trying to achieve? You know, how many clients are they really trying to attract and what ways do they want to attract them? Because if you think of just about a budget for a website and you want to get potential new clients, um, how are you going to achieve that unless you put any budget towards SEO marketing or advertising online? Mm. You're not going to achieve it because if, I know I'm using a different scenario, but if you had a product that you wanted to sell in the, in the supermarkets and you made that product if you don't put that out there into distribution no one's going to find you but that's a, what a lot of people do is they build a website and then they don't leave any budget to market the website as well so the the process we will go through we will sit down with the client we'll get an understanding of their business in the initial meeting we'll draw a little outline of what potentially how they may want their home page to be laid out we're going to need to look at the content is the content provided by them would the content be provided uh, you know by by another company uh, so that the, there's engaging content so that's uh, something else that needs to be looked at images as well you need to have good imagery within the website once we've nailed down that brief and we've got that design element of what the client's trying to achieve what a good studio should do is they shouldn't just go and build the website at that point they should have a planning process. 
you should at least build design mock-up concepts of the key pages. So we would build a design concept at least of the home page, maybe of a relevant product or service page, possibly of a latest project or a blog section. Mm -hmm. So the client can see visually what that site will look like. If the client doesn't like what the site's gonna, the, the first mock-up will look like, what really we need to do, that bit's so important to get nailed on, then you go and build another design uh, uh, concept because what you don't want to do is get to the end of the project and the client goes, I don't like that because you're trying to take the vision in their head mm. and put it onto a screen. And it can be more challenging when there's more than one process person involved in the decision making process. So they need to be as a collective, know what they want as a customer rather than just go, can you build me something? But I don't know what I really want. So that's why you need to get the engagement from the client. Yeah. At the at the end of the process, the client will actually get a site link for them to view. At that end process, it should only be little tweaks because if the design mock concepts are done right at the beginning process, then that's where uh, the end process are much more easy and smoother for the client. Absolutely. And then like, and the last process that we go through that a lot of clients won't do once they're happy with everything, we will actually go through a quality assurance process. So we're going through, we're checking the site to make sure it works across most multiple browsers, devices. It's so important that they adapt to all devices nowadays. So that process is quite in-depth what we do. We do technical on-site SEO, but that's the very end process. You will find certain people don't go through this process and they're almost cutting corners. Uh, if you want it done properly, that's really the processes that you need to, to follow. And if a client want to have engagement with their website that they want to be able to make some changes themselves or they want to have uh, articles written then it's important that the, the content management system which allows you to have control of controlling the website yourself we actually physically go through and we give you training on how to use the system whether it's for content or whether it's it's e-commerce because yeah. there's no point in having a website but you don't know how to use it and that's really important as well I absolutely agree with the last yeah. factor because you end up not being, you're feeling really frustrated because you can't just go on and make those amends and keep it up to speed. And then you're ending up paying out a lot of money for somebody to do those changes. And I think in the sort of newer website models, it's a lot easier for you guys to be able to hand that over mm -hmm. and to be able to, like you say, do the hands-on training and get mm -hmm. them involved. And I think the difference with your companies, which is why we love working with you, which is the mm -hmm. fact that you have an in-house team that really are in-house. Yeah. So you've got your graphic design team, you've got SEO, SEO, you Google Ads management. I mean, everything is pretty much a seamless experience. Whereas with a lot of companies, it's to be wary of companies then farming out to somebody randomly, I don't know, in Canada or wherever, and, uh, and just sort of giving them your website build. And there's no, there's no sort of flow in terms of workflow, timings, it all becomes out of sync. So very often with that kind of setup, you know, you're initially looking to, to launch your website in six months time or two months time or a month's time and actually the process can be much longer and much more drawn out and have a lot more complications than having a company and a team of yours look at it because you're all in-house and you're all talking to each other and it's you know it's that workflow isn't it it is and i think there's key things as well and i think it's being realistic with the clients as well mm. because we we will do what we need to do but the client needs to be aware there's a certain amount of engagement because unless we can interact with a client and we can get content on time, it slows down the process. So it's not just push the button and go. We, because yes, content can be written, but it needs to be engaging. Mm -hmm. And that's so important that the client gives us or yourself the right information so that they are getting the correct uh, the message across. Absolutely. And when we work with our clients to do their website builds, it's very much yeah. a hands on experience with us working directly with people like yourself, which as yeah. you know, just to be able to create the content, make sure it's delivered on time. So that we're all nobody's holding up the process. Yeah. Uh, but you're right in terms of, you know, the client has to be really clear in terms of what exactly they want, their vision, just because, again, that can all have a knock on effect to the, the, you know, the final day of delivery. Um, yeah. I think it's also trying to save the client money as well, because what we don't want to do is do amendment after amendment when they don't need that. They need to think, what do they want? Tell ourselves, tell yourself, mm -hmm. so that we can actually get that right first time for them. Yeah. You know, and that's all we're trying to achieve, really, because we don't want the client to go and go and go again, just yeah. with, with, with 
you know, amendments, constant amendments. Yeah. I mean, what's really interesting is I touched on it earlier is about, you know, obviously with the crisis, a lot of companies are now starting if they haven't got e-commerce on their website i've noticed that a lot of companies are starting to uh, include e-commerce onto their websites i mean you know in terms of of you know it's a big loaded question but are there any key aspects that people should be thinking about if they are looking to add e-commerce to their current website or what would you sort of say as a, as a general sort of guidelines on that on that topic well i mean it's interesting because the climate we're in it seems that a lot of businesses have now got caught out they haven't thought about their websites they haven't thought about what they wanted to do unfortunately they need to at this point have different solutions of being able to provide a service for their clients and i think after this point people will will really consider we must have a budget or be looking at having this right for our websites and then if they go down the e-commerce line it's just making sure that you've got certain features or goals in place that you want the site to, to do. I mean, the, the thing that we discuss all the time is the site's got to be user friendly. Uh, and it's, you've got to be thinking, you'll hear the terminology responsive design. So what you're doing is you're building the website so it adapts to all devices, whether it's a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile. But what the site will do, it can tell what sort of device you're viewing from so it will adapt the view for that device. And again, if you're thinking about e-commerce, think just about how you can get to that next point, that journey for that product. You want it to be in as less clicks as possible. And again, there's no point in having a site that's got very good navigation mm -hmm. if all the images are really poor. Have amazing images. You know, it's so, so important. Get interaction with reviews sections within the website. Get reviews in there because people are looking at reviews now, and it has changed. At one point, people weren't as bothered. Nowadays, people do look at look at reviews. Do you need special offers? You know, because people love a special offer. So, could that just be a special offer section within the website? There's no point in your special offer section being hidden at the bottom of the website. It needs to be in a prominent place. Some companies will want to have implemented like maybe an initial first time you sign up a discount code. There are things that can be done. Maybe think about, depends on the product you're selling, but if you're, you may want related search features. So you may purchase one product and there may be a, a, a relevant product next to that that is getting you to buy that additional pro uh, product as well. And I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I always end up buying extra stuff, Rose, because I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so, so, that, so yeah. it's definitely worth having that within the website. <laughs> uh, and, and think about the website because it, this is a mistake you see every so often. You will see a website that may be e-commerce and they won't have an SSL certificate. So when you're hitting a website, it's telling you the site's not secure. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's surprisingly enough, social interruption, but, uh, you know, surprisingly enough, there are a lot of websites out there that still aren't secure. And again, that is a big factor in terms of Google. Actually, I think it's on Chrome, don't they flag up this, this uh, website could be harmful. Um, you get that alert if, you're, if your website is not secure. And people think it's not necessarily ha even having a website that's selling. It's just having a website that should be secure generally anyway, isn't well, it? Well, Google changed it. It only wanted it on e-commerce at, at one point. They now right. want these in all websites. And it is not an expensive cost at all for your who, whoever your company is, your designer, your developer, to actually implement for you. It is such a small cost. I mean, you're probably talking there's a small setup charge to actually put this in place. And then when you pay uh, the cost per year, it could be anything from maybe 40 to 80 pounds, depending on what certificate it is, to make sure that, you know, that your site's encrypted and you've got, got the padlock when Joe Public understand that I want to buy from your website. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Another thing that we see quite a lot of is, is the GDPR. Mm. You know, the fact that, that there's no privacy um, statement or policy, there's no... Um, details about which cookies they're using on the website and again that can get you into hot water can't it and again it's coming back to who you're dealing with because if your company isn't advising you correctly I mean we're advising customers you do want to have your GDPR policy it needs to be uh, displayed on your website what you're predominantly doing is it depends how you control data 
Mm. You know, if you're going to, some GDPR policies will be simpler than other ones. If you're going to start having people on mailing lists, uh, you're going to have newsletters going out. Regardless, your policy's got to be correct. You are technically legally leaving yourself open that you can get a fine as a as a business as a percentage of your your turnover if you have a data breach so for that small piece of work why would you not put a privacy policy on yeah absolutely and it, yeah and again may apart from the privacy policy if you're selling online have your terms and conditions on there your delivery return policies have a frequently answered question section as well so that way, they're probably the key features that you want to make sure that you, you're thinking about if you're looking at an e-commerce website. No, that's really yeah. valuable information. Yeah. And these are some kind of really sort of quite common mistakes yeah. that we see a lot when we're sort of searching around and things like updating your website. And like you say about people forgetting it. I mean, we were looking at a website, I think it was last week, and they still had Christmas. <laughs> a big Christmas banner <laughs> on their website and you know it's about being mindful and remembering to check in on your website and check it's still functioning it's working okay and it looks okay and you know it, it's it's really just about sort of you know you do your website but you don't forget about it isn't it it's, it's an ongoing project it is and I think it's a key thing as well for I think what's really important is for the the client to think about their website and not just maybe the design studio because if you get that scenario where someone's left an old message on and the client actually instructs their designer or developer to put a message on, if that designer or developer put yourself in their shoes as X amount of hundreds of clients, if you do not give them that new message to put on your website or take something off, unless you're paying them for certain maintenance packages, mm -hmm. they're not going to be looking out for this. No. So unless you go, here's my new offer coming up for... You know, you may be a florist and you're thinking about Mother's Day, you know, coming up as, as your next promotion. Unless you're, you're saying to them, I've now done Mother's Day, this is my next promotion I want up. You know, you've got to engage with, your, with the company you're working with. Yeah, absolutely. And keep them yeah. informed and in the loop. I mean, I think what's really interesting is, is obviously, you know, they've got, say, for example, you've managed to create this fantastic website yourself. Um, but as I said to you again, it's about ongoing care isn't it and one of the issues i think which we've even experienced with our website was we got hacked into uh, they found a way through an app that we had installed on the website there was a, a weakness there um and again you know that's something you know in terms of being able to have the website backed up and hosted securely and all of those factors i mean that's just you know it's not just about having your website online and it, it running isn't it there's, there's so much more to to what you guys do exactly and i think this is something when you know that we initially spoke about obviously beforehand from your previous experiences and now obviously we have maintenance packages for you so the way maintenance packages work is we will turn around and there are updates that need to be done within the website some websites for businesses will have to have plugins done so what that means is there may be a feature that they want to have within the website that somebody's already developed so rather than have a very expensive cost of developing something you want the website to do, someone may have done that. You may have a small yearly charge of $60 per year if someone developed it in the States. So when you do your updates within your website, you need to make sure that everything's still correctly working. You know, the, the customer is not a technical person. So you're relying on someone with expertise to do that. If you have a maintenance package, you have updates on your, your mobile phone. If you don't do updates on your mobile phone, you start going, why is my phone not working properly? Now, if you look at your website in a much larger you know, system compared to a mobile phone, if you don't do any updates, then you're going to start getting errors with your update. And where you say about sites being hacked, we generally had a, a position where we was recommended a client, they had a problem, uh, They, funny enough, they were a florist, uh, their site got hacked, and then they turn around at a really important time of the year when they needed to be trading. It affected the revenue they were taking. And since then, they've built a new website uh, with ourselves. They have a maintenance package as well. But you don't have to maybe have, there's different options. You can have bi-monthly maintenance packages or monthly maintenance. It just depends on how much response you need mm -hmm. and including maybe a, some time for simple changes mm -hmm. because you're just trying to make sure that your site's secure. And maybe 10, 15 years ago, it didn't matter. There wasn't many websites out there. People weren't trying to hack websites. Nowadays, it's a totally different scenario. And probably one of the most universal sites used out there 
uh, is WordPress for a content management system. So again, you're just trying to make sure that your, your updates are done regularly. But it, it, it's not just updates as well. You want to make sure that the site's getting, you know, updates, not just on, on maintenance, but, you know, on, on content as well. So that your site is getting engagement as well as you're going along with trying to develop and build your website. Yeah, no, fantastic. I mean, that's really interesting. And I think you're right. You know, it's also about having a team that you can go to. I mean, if, you, if your business is entirely online and that is your shop, you know, if you get hacked into and you can't trade, like you say, the most important days, like for example, it was your client with a Mother's Day, it might be Valentine's Day, someone else Christmas or other key dates in the calendar when notoriously you're going to be busier as a store. If your shop is hacked into, you need to be able to recover that as quickly as possible and you know like you say being able to work with a team that you can have a fast response to is going to be imperative for, the, for your business you know and how well it does and how quickly you can resolve the issue exactly it's really really important and if we deal with a client and if for some reason you know touch with everything's normally okay but if there's a problem you've got to be reactive and you've got to try and help the client as quickly as possibly as you can to resolve any issues because no one we have to be a hundred percent honest with clients no one can guarantee a hundred percent uptime because anything can happen in the world that you don't foresee coming whether it's a small company or a larger national company as well it can totally vary but it's just being reactive to it if there is something that you need to to look at for a client absolutely Richard. so i wanted to chat with you about free tools because i know that you said you had some free tools that you could share with so i'm really excited about it so tell us tell us what free tools that you've, you've got that you that people could maybe have a look well, at it, there are tools out there that you can use that are free i mean probably one of the most common ones that people will know is google analytics um brilliant from the point, point of view. Don't have that. that's fantastic <laughs> But people have it, but they don't understand it. So it's really having an understanding of Google Analytics and at least having the core reports that you can analyze your website so you know how your website's uh, actually performing and the traction that you're actually getting So from, from uh, the reporting system. I mean, there's other things as well when you're maybe building a website and a, a line that we've found from experience is Clients will take, almost go and build a website, and if it's a smaller business, they will go, I will just provide the images, I'm not worried about licensed images. And we always advise our clients that you should be using licensed images. Um, people will just assume they can take an image off at another website, and when you yeah. take that image, the file compresses and you can't use it, and it will pixelate when you put the image up. Also, but, can I just jump in there from my PR head on? It's <laughs> right perspective yeah. that people don't even really think about you know we see a lot with social media screen grabs of royalty celebrities and you, know, you speak to the the brand and uh, is that your image no we got it off of google and it's the same principle you know it's not only the fact that it's low quality but it's also the fact that that probably who owns that image have you bought that for that purpose you we, know and we actually had a client absolute true story not a large restaurant they actually turned around, they had access to the website themselves for putting up images for, you know, like a food offer. So they're in control of that. Went and took an image from somewhere else. Shouldn't have done it. We wasn't aware of it. They then had a letter turning around and saying, you've used our image. Uh, we want compensation for the fee of £900. Uh, in the end, there was a settlement and ended up paying them £400 for an image they shouldn't have taken. So this is something that happened to a small local restaurant, even though you advise your clients to do things correctly, people will try and cut corners. But there, when we, we, we look at free tools, there are some free tools out there. There are paid for places you can buy images. Uh, there's a place called Unsplash Photos. You can go on there and you can get images from there. So if there's an image that's free to use, mm -hmm. use that image. Don't also, take the risk on going somewhere else. Pixie Bay is another good yeah. free platform as well for imagery as well. That's a good uh, good website that we use as well. So you can, like you say, you can create your images or, I mean, you've got your mobile phone now. Most smartphones are a brilliant camera, you know. They are indeed, yeah. You know, so you can actually, as long as your settings allow for a high resolution image to be taken, you can get pretty good quality images of, you know, with a bit of good lighting. <laughs> That's the ideal scenario. We say provide your own images, it's your own unique content. Why do you want to have a website that's got the same in, image on another website in another part of the country? That is sort of the ideal, ideal way of actually providing the images for a website. 
But again, when your company does the website, you should also be thinking, yes, you want a great high resolution image maybe for your homepage slider, but if you go and put that high resolution image and you don't optimize that image for a smaller uh, section within the website, then that's going to slow down your loading speeds as, as well. Yeah, that's um, a really important factor. Absolutely. I mean, a, a few other free tools. There's paid for versions. There's free versions. People are now using live chat. So there are there's so many different live chat options out there. I mean, one that's pretty good is called Pure Chat because they have a free option on there. You don't, if you're not having multiple users, if you're a smaller business that might just want two or three people using the system, you could use that without any cost to your business. So if you've got someone potentially that wants to contact you maybe within their lunch hour uh, to make an inquiry, they can do that on Pure Chat without feeling they have to make a phone call in the middle of their office even though they're on lunch, so you've still got the way of engaging with that client and, you know, obviously getting a potential new, uh, new business that way. And then there's other, there's other uh, items that can be used as well. For example, uh, Google Search Console. So our SEO specialist, it's a, a free one that you can use. It, you will need to get your designer, your developer to implement it onto your website as well. Uh, but again, it, again, it can help you spot potential errors that may be within the website there may be core errors for example there may be mobile errors so it's really good so it's worth trying to, to implement that as well um, absolutely good good for finding 404 pages on your website indeed, work. <laughs> in, indeed indeed and there's a i mean there's so many different tools what i would turn around and say is if you're looking maybe on social media canva is another one that's pretty good that you can use but you've got to learn how to use these tools so yeah. you've got to be aware you've got to put a bit of time in there what i would say is probably be a little bit careful with some of the tools because there's lots of ranking tools out there that almost go we want to do a report on your website we're ranking your website it's really really poor some of them aren't very accurate so you need to be aware that if you're using these tools they're, some of the paid for ones are out there because they're there for a reason because they, they are more accurate and sometimes the free ones may compare you your website against an international website and it may go your site doesn't rank as well but it's a way they're probably trying to get their foot in the door to do business with you so just be realistic there are different tools out there that work in different ways and and again you may even think when you're trying to see how you're ranking i'm going to start searching myself online um, maybe if you've got pay for advertising on Google, if you keep doing the same search, Google will change its search results because it's trying to give you relevant traffic. So if you're constantly search, searching the same, it's going to change the same search results. So just be aware of that as well. But there's a few decent free tools that at least give people an understanding if they want to do an element of research themselves. But we're always happy to try and help customers if they need any advice at all. Oh, Richard, that's fantastic. Listen, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. And what I'll do is I'll get those links up of you and we'll put them below um, in, in, the, in the, wherever we post it, we'll put that, we'll include those links. because so I think they're really valuable for everybody. Um, but, you know, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Lovely to speak to you. Again. <laughs>